Okay, so I got a request from uh, Eli. He wants to uh, he wants me to help him with playing uh, over someday my prince will come. So I made a whole bunch of uh, PDFs here with just bob scales that I've covered before. So again, if you don't know what bob scales are, I suggest you go to watch my previous videos on bob scales or any instructional video on bob scales for that matter. Uh, so b before I go, uh, I get into these bob scales. There's a couple of things about this tune that it needs to be addressed. I think uh, a couple of places where the chords. Uh, I need to uh, explain why I'm picking certain scales over certain chords. So it starts with a B flat, right? And then you have this dominant chord, D seven altered. But it doesn't go to G minor, that is the expected resolution. But it goes to E flat, which is a common thing to do, right? You go to another chord and uh, still functions as a dominant chord that wants to go to G minor. It just resolves to a different chord, right? So the interesting thing here is that the note is an A natural over E flat, which gives you a Lydian sound. But here's the interesting thing. It's not really a Lydian chord, right? It is that note wants to resolve. It doesn't want to stay there. It wants to resolve to. So it's, there's a difference when you have a chord where the melody note is an extension as sharp 11 or another extension, or if it's a note that wants to resolve, then you have to be a little bit more careful treating it as a Lydian chord, right? So. If you play just an E flat major seven chord and the melody is playing that note, it's fine because it resolves, right? So that could actually be a diminished sound too, right? So uh, and the interesting thing, another interesting thing is that it doesn't resolve 
As soon as the note resolves, there's another chord, a G alter. That's kind of what makes this tune interesting. And then you have a similar thing, G7 alter. Some people play C7 there, or C minor. Okay, and uh, if you want to be fancy, you can play superimposed triads over those dominant chords. So the G, you can play an E flat triad over the guide tones of G. So B, F, B flat, E flat, G. So I'm playing a D over E flat here is a kind of a fancy diminished chord, right? And then C minor. You can do the same thing here. E flat, triad, over B and F. The guide tones of G7. It's a kind of a hard uh, stretch on this guitar. And uh, you can do that over the first... B flat over C and F sharp. There's also a problem with the, the register of this melody is huge. So some people play it down here. I like to start here. you end up you can do that but uh, I like to stay down here so here's the next place where it is a little bit uh, you have to consider the chord here it's a D minor C sharp diminished with an A C minor F so when there's a minor chord in a tonal situation that chord could be a tonic has a tonic function or it could have a subdominant function so the c minor in this key of b flat is a subdominant function it's a two chord so the correct scale would be dorian obviously but the d minor chord is the third chord of b flat so the correct scale would actually be Phrygian. This is kind of something that is overlooked in jazz theory, I think, because a lot of people gloss over that. They should say like, well, it should be a minor chord, you should play Dorian. But no, the Dorian scale sounds weird. That's the, well, I'm not going to pick that scale when I pick my Bob scales later on in this video. Phrygian scale would be better. The reason why people think that it's Dorian is because a lot of times you have this progression. D minor, G7, C minor, F7. Now all of a sudden the D minor becomes a relative two of the G7. So now that Dorian works, you get this out. It's kind of a parallel harmony moving. But if you have this, It sounds to me more like it's a B flat major seven first inversion. And then I get this weird chord, the Django Reinhardt chord, right? Which is a diminished chord with a sixth added. Flat six. And then C minor. F. So I could even play B flat here. Sounds fine. Or D minor, or an inversion of B flat, B flat major. But if I play like a minor 9 chord, that, that sounds wrong to me. 
I mean, you can do that as a hip thing, but it's not the obvious scale choice. So we're gonna remember that when I pick the bob scales later on. So that was bob scales starting on the root and uh, so let's just look at some of these they're pretty self-explanatory so b flat bob scale because the tune is in three the patterns are getting shorter less notes that's enough starting on the root d7 a mixo flat to flat six starting on the root the thing is that they kind of, it's easy to connect those scales, so I just connected them. So I'm not being super strict about this. Sometimes I'm adding notes. If I find there's a good way to connect the scales, I'll do that because you don't have to be dogmatic about this. And again, if you don't know what these bob scales are, if you don't know what a mixo flat two flat six bob scale is, watch my previous videos or I strongly recommend the book Jazz Line by Jeremy Gonsi which really covers all these scales in detail so if you have no idea what this is then maybe uh, you need to go back and do some research so moving on E flat major 7 same thing there adding a note so I connect it to the G dominant bob scale then F mixo bob scale over C minor and again if you're confused about this watch my previous videos we're playing an F mixo over m minor C minor chord G freaking dominant bob scale and then I've con those two next two bars C minor 7 F7 uh, I treat as the same thing right so I've explained this also before then I have that D minor which I'm gonna First time I'm gonna treat it as a Phrygian. So Phrygian bob scale. It's just a Phrygian scale adding the seventh, the major seventh. Then the diminished chord, I've also talked about this in my previous videos. Uh, when you have a diminished chord like that, you can think of that as an A7 because it's like an A7 with the C sharp for the bass. common in like early jazz so that scale works great over that chord I did that in the Donna Lee video I think so it's a A mixo flat 2 flat 6 or A Phrygian dominant bob scale and uh, the next time the next bar I think of that D minor as a B flat and to prove my point that actually sounds good so that B flat is not an avoid note if the chord has that function the flat six in my opinion is not an avoid note if it is a on the third degree okay so that was that and uh, now I'm going to do the same thing and uh, this time I'm going to start on the third degree of each scale and do the same thing and we'll see what the hell that sounds like.
I'm kind of reading my own PDF here as uh, so I'm trying to play this. I shouldn't do that. Uh, it's just being lazy here. I should, you should be able to do this without looking at the notes. You should just be able to do it. Uh, just cover a few things here. Second bar, there's a D7, you have the F sharp. So there's a funny jump there from the F sharp to the next note. You can play F instead, the sharp nine instead of the third. I think I did that in a couple of places. So if you think that sounds better, so it would be. And then on the C minor, um, I play a normal scale. Because I liked how that connected to the next chord. So instead of, I just played a C minor or a Dorian. So again, I'm not being dogmatic about this. I've, sometimes I find something that I like, I'll, I'll uh, throw it in there. And uh, so it makes more sense to me. Uh, what else did I do? Okay, I think, yeah, I connected the, the D Phrygian with an A scale. A dom Phrygian dominant. Because I just liked how that sounded too. Uh, so uh, now you need to start on the fifth and the seventh degree as well. Uh, also, you should be playing the bobs case ascending. I never do that in my videos, but you should play it this way too. So uh, I'm going to try, I didn't write out the fifth and the seventh degree because you have to do something yourself. And uh, I should try to prove my own point here that I, you should be able to do this without looking at any notation, just from thinking and playing. So I'll try to do my best here to play Bob scales starting on the fifth degree. Or actually, I'm going to do the seventh degree. So the first chord is a B flat. So the seventh degree would actually be the sixth of that chord, right? Follow me. And then you start on the C. Then you would start on a C again. And an F. So you need to find the seventh degree or sixth of each chord, right? So uh, it's a little bit tricky. I'll see if I, if I can do it. So I'm looking at the chord symbols now, not the... She didn't even do that, but I'm, I'm kind of lazy right now, so bear with me. PDF after a while because I realized I'm totally capable of doing it just from uh, without looking and I lost it at the end there. Also another thing is some of you might think that the the last four cards for the last four chords it's not what the real book says it says like uh, I guess which is what you need to play for it to fit with the melody right so most people when they're blowing over this tune they play these chords like b flat for one bar g7 you might want to listen to shikaria's recording of this with the acoustic band where they vamp on those a lot uh, so uh there's different there are different changes for the blowing as or when you play the melody is what i'm trying to say Okay, uh, now, 
you do this with starting out all the degrees and then uh, there's another aspect to BOF scales that I haven't covered before, which is uh, superimposed BOF scales. Because this tune kind of, it is a Disney tune. It's an old American songbook tune, I guess. Well, not that old because it's a Disney tune, but it's not a modern jazz composition, but it kind of suggests a more modern sound. It, because of the extensions, <laughs> kind of sounding, even though I said it's not an extension, but it suggests that kind of sound. Like here, for example. Right, so those notes kind of sound modern, like the sharp five. It's just a note leading to the C. But it kind of suggests the even a major seven sharp five sound. If you want to be really modern. So there's this chord too, it's a lot of people play different things for that after the E flat. So F minor, B, E flat. Is it E diminished? Or is it E split? Or E split A7? Or is it, you know, it's pretty much this up for grabs. It's all kind of the same. I'm treating that as some kind of A7. Okay, uh, that's why you, if you think about the Bob scale, if I have the B flat, if I play a B flat Bob scale, the notes that I'm emphasizing are the strong beats, right? So B flat passing note, six passing note, fifth passing note, third passing note, back. So it's I'm outlining this chord. Which is a B flat six chord. Interestingly enough, the other notes that I'm omitting now, the passing notes, they create a diminished chord. So you have a major six chord and a diminished chord combined, you get a bop scale. And uh, I'm not gonna delve into the, the aspects of that, but my point is that it's an old kind of sound. If I want a more modern sound, like a, I need to pick a bop scale that emphasizes extensions. So superimposed bop scales is something that I don't think I've talked about. It's also covered in Bergonzi's book, Jazz Line. So it's basically just starting on the third. So I think uh, the PDF says D Aeolian bop. It should probably say Phrygian bop for the first quarter. So I'm playing a, a bop scale starting on the third. It could be Aeolian too, depending if you want that E natural or E flat. <laughs> Now if I do that, I get the third, the ninth, the major seven, and the fifth. So for the altered chords, I'm just going to play an altered scale. I'm not going to get into the superimposed bop scale over altered dominance because that's a huge topic in and of itself. You can check out Bergonzi's book. He really covers all the possibilities there. I'm just gonna play an altered scale. Descending and then for the minor chords, I'm playing a bop scale a fifth away. So over the C minor, I play a G Aeolian bop scale. And uh, yeah, and for the diminished chord, I'm playing a symmetrical diminished scale because that's a very modern thing to do. Uh, yeah, so I'll play this so you can hear what it sounds like.
again, if you want these PDFs, you can find them on my Patreon page. And so for $1, you can get access to all the PDFs and whatever I put up there, which enables me to continue make these videos. So, uh, so that was my little lesson on someday my prints will come and uh, superimposed bob scales. So then of course you want to start the superimposed bob scales on all the degrees of that scale, which is kind of tricky because now you have to think about what the actual note you're starting on is, which is going to be a little bit trickier than before. And uh, if you think that's a lot of work, my reply to that would be, yes, it is. And uh, I know because I've done that work. And uh, yeah, with that, I'll shall see you next time. Thank you.